A teenage girl named Mary Beth just graduated high school in 1961. Now since then, she's been trying to occupy herself in the world, and after working several low-wage jobs, she landed herself a job as a nursing assistant at Ellis Hospital, New York. Now after years of working, she wants to pursue a relationship, later participating in a blind date with an outgoing and carefree guy, Joseph Tinning. Now the two get married in 1965 and have three children, named Barbara, Joey, and Jennifer. However, right after Jennifer's birth, she develops meningitis, along with brain diseases, sadly dying at only eight days old on January 3rd, 1972. Now weirdly enough, Mary Beth Tinning does not shed a single tear over her daughter's death, since she is distracted by the sympathy and attention coming her way. Even though she seemed to be emotionless at Jennifer's funeral, nobody would actually accuse her of not mourning properly. They think to themselves that Mary Beth is probably just in deep shock at the situation. However, only 17 days after Jennifer's death, she rushes Joey to the hospital after he supposedly experienced a seizure and was choking on his own vomit. A few days of careful inspection, however, and Joey is released from the hospital as doctors find nothing wrong with the young boy. A few hours later, however, Mary Beth returns to the exact same hospital carrying a motionless Joey in her arms. Now the boy's death is deemed a heart attack with no autopsy of the body being performed. Now over the course of the next 13 years, Mary Beth Tinning gives birth to five more of her children and adopts a son. And strangely enough, each and every one of these children die under her care. Now obviously everyone is suspicious about what was really going on inside the household, but everyone concluded that perhaps the children's deaths were caused by some rare genetic disorder. Thankfully, this assumption is quickly disproven as their adoptive son Michael, who doesn't share the same DNA as his mother, dies in 1981. However, it still takes four more years and the death of one more child before the truth is finally revealed. On December 20th, 1985, Mary Beth's final child, four-month-old Tammy Lynn, died with no explanation. Now finally, authorities put the two together and bring Mary Beth in for interrogation. Now even though she doesn't admit to any wrongdoing at first, after a few hours, she breaks down and describes the sickening things she put her children through. As a result, she's arrested after providing a 36-page confession where she admits to smothering Nathan, Timothy, and Tammy Lynn. Strangely enough, she repeatedly denies any responsibility for the death of her other children. In a part of the confession, she even details a point where she poisoned her own husband, Joseph, after having an argument, where he was sent to the hospital and survived afterwards. Like our previous case on Lacey Spears, Mary Beth was experiencing a condition called Munchausen by proxy. After the death of her first child, she was addicted to the attention and sympathy that she received. This basically turned her into a quote-unquote sympathy junkie at the cost of her own children's lives. Despite the sheer number of deaths involved in the case, she's only charged for the killing of her ninth child, Tammy Lynn, and is sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. Now as time passes, after seven attempts at parole, she was released from prison in 2018 and is now living with her husband Joseph in New York. Now one thing that I find absolutely crazy about the case is that it took investigators four years to finally catch on to what was happening to her kids. I also believe that Mary Beth's punishment was way too forgiving, and that she should have received a much harsher punishment due to the fact that she just murdered nine of her children. However, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below, and thank you for watching.